Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and in today's video we're going to be installing low pressure and high pressure switches onto my HVAC training board. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. In today's video we're going to be wiring up a low pressure and high pressure control for my HVAC training board. This is a representation of an air conditioner. If you haven't seen my previous videos on a few components using this board, I will leave a few links in this video's description. Let's get straight into it. To the left of us with the green base and red leads is our high pressure control. And to the right of us with the black base and the blue leads is our low pressure control. Just so it's clear, each control has two wires. You will encounter these type of pressure switches in the field and it's important to note that these type of pressure switches have no adjustments to them. They are preset. So here is the tag for our low pressure switch. It has an automatic reset. So the switch will open if the pressure reaches 5 PSI and it will close or reset when the pressure reaches 20 PSI. When we take a closer look at our pressure controls, we can see we have a brass body and it's a female threaded connection. This will get attached to our pressure testing points on either our high and or low side of the system. If we take even a closer look inside, we can see that there is a depressor where a Schrader valve will be in the equation. Here we have my training board and to the right of us we have our pressure testing points. Just for reference, this is going to be considered our low side and this one is going to be considered our high side. Please note this is a demonstration only and there is no pressure involved in this setup. And the main purpose of this video is going to be how to wire one of these into a system that doesn't have any pressure controls, either a high, low or both. So one key step. I do want to point out is that you do not want to install your pressure control just like that. Let's say this is our only low pressure port. From here, yes, we might install the control, but now we have nowhere to test pressures. In that case, you're going to want to install a swivel T. This is a swivel T. So we would connect this port onto our pressure port. And now we have one side where we can connect our pressure control. And at the same time, we now have an access port to check pressures. In this demonstration, I will not be using swivel T's, but I wanted to show you all how this would look like. So we installed our swivel T onto our pressure testing point. One side has our pressure control, and now we have an extra space where we can check pressures and perform all sorts of tasks using the refrigerant. Most people in the field would just install one of these onto an operating system, but personally, I like to do a good job and a safe job as we could possibly contaminate the refrigerant just by installing one of these as we could introduce air or moisture into the system. So preferably, I would like to recover the refrigerant, then install one of these, pull a good vacuum, check for leaks, and then wire it up. Let's say we recovered the refrigerant from the system. We have two Schrader valves at these points. We're going to install our swivel T's and then from there we're going to screw on our pressure controls. Of course, let's pretend we have our swivel T's on and now we have these mounted. From here we can pressurize the system, check for leaks, make sure there's no leaks. From there we can pull a vacuum and then charge the fresh refrigerant. From this step, we're going to wire these up. If so far you are enjoying this video, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. Don't forget to share with your friends, and let's continue. There's a few ways to wire this, and typically we're either going to make and break either our yellow wire, which stands for cooling, or our red wire, which is our main 24 volt power supply. Let's just take a look at this setup. Here is our thermostat. Here's our thermostat cable. We have a red wire, which is our 24 volt supply. We have a blue wire, and this is our common. Our green wire is for our indoor fan, and our yellow wire is our cooling wire. R, C, G, and Y. The best way to go about this would definitely be to make and break our yellow wire, our Y terminal, which is our cooling wire. This wire comes from our transformer, 
it's gonna come in through R into our thermostat. It leaves through the blue wire back to common on the transformer. When you call for cooling, common stays where it is, but the red wire is going to close a pair of contacts and then send the 24 volts through this yellow wire. So this is gonna be our starting point right here. Of course, this is our low voltage terminal block. We are dealing with 24 volts here. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is take this yellow wire coming out of our thermostat, disconnect it from this low voltage terminal block, and from there, we're gonna go into the low pressure control, and then out of the low pressure control into our high pressure control, and then out of our high pressure control, we're gonna put it back into the circuit so then it can continue with its operation. I'm just gonna go ahead and wire this all up and then show you exactly how the electricity flows and to make things easier, I will show you guys a diagram. So before I do any type of wire management, I just wanna show you all exactly what happened here. Of course, this looks insane and it might be confusing, but the diagram, stay tuned for that. It's gonna make this so much simpler. So. Our yellow wire right here is coming from our thermostat. This is our Y. We're gonna disconnect that from our circuit. So basically just cut that wire. In this case, I just unscrewed it, but you're gonna cut that wire. So the one directly from the thermostat, you're gonna take that and then take one lead of your first pressure control. In this case, it's gonna be our low pressure control and it's gonna get connected. So out of the thermostat, Y, first wire gets connected into our pressure control. There's one wire left on our pressure control, the low one. From there, that one is gonna get connected to one side of our high pressure control. Then we have one wire left for our high pressure control, and then that's going to go back to where originally the yellow wire was. So let's explain exactly the flow of operations here. We get a call for cooling. So what's gonna happen is that now the yellow wire, which is our cooling wire, before it can go to all of our components, in this case, we have a timer and a contactor. What's gonna happen is that we're now gonna go through our safety controls. So now we have 24 volts on this yellow wire. It's now gonna go into the low pressure control, out of the low pressure control, into the high pressure control, and now once we can prove that we have our safeties in good function and everything's okay with the pressures, then it can continue through here and continue with the flow. So what happens in this case is that it goes into here, into our timer, out of our timer to one side of the coil on our contactor. And then the other side of our contactor goes back to common on our transformer and we can complete the circuit. Here's a diagram that I drew of exactly what we wired here and the sequence of operation. So this was our yellow wire, our Y terminal, which is our cooling wire. This is coming off directly from the thermostat. So we take that wire and then we connect it to one side of our low pressure control. It goes through the low pressure control and then the other side of our low pressure control gets connected to our high pressure control. Out of the high pressure control, which is the next wire here, it goes into our timer. Keep in mind these are normally closed contacts, these are switches. Next we go into our next switch, out of the high pressure control, into one side of our timer. This is a normally open contact, and once power goes into here, it goes through a set of timing. We can set that anywhere from three seconds to a few minutes. So let's say we have it set to one minute. After one minute, it goes through the timer, these contacts will close. Then out of the timer, it leaves and goes into one side of our compressor contactor coil. Out of that contactor coil, the opposite end, goes back to C, which is our common on our transformer. So, as long as everything is okay in the situation, as long as our pressures are good, electricity will flow 
once our timer time has elapsed it will go through energize the coil for our contactor and from there the contacts for our contactors will close and that will energize our compressor before we finish off today's lesson we're going to go over how this actually works the pressure controls and give a real life scenario so here is our low pressure control let's say you have a leak in the system and you're going to lose refrigerant that's going to give you a drop in pressure these contacts will open and stop the electricity to our starting component which in this case is our compressor contactor which will shut off our compressor and preserve it these operate as a switch next we have our high pressure control let's say this is an air-cooled system and our condenser fan motor goes bad our pressure is going to start to rise on the high side and open these contacts once again stopping the flow of electricity to our starting component which is going to be our compressor contactor for our compressor and shut it down for safety as long as our refrigerant pressures are good and all our components are in working order this should flow accordingly and we have either air conditioning or refrigeration from here you will now know how to install low pressure and high pressure controls into a system that doesn't have them this is a very crucial component sometimes you will run across this and if you do now you know how to install it how to wire it and give the customer protection if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time